Still pushing myself creatively, this week I gave myself one theme, water, and set out to make three different nature photographs based on that theme and went again with kind of an abstract or semi-abstract style. I want to show you what I came up with and show you how already doing these exercises is infusing some creativity into my bird photography. As I mentioned in the last video, I've been giving myself these little photo challenges to try to push me out of my comfort zone in the hope that'll just loosen me up a little bit creatively, especially in my approach to wildlife and bird photos. I've also wanted to experiment more with abstract or semi-abstract nature photography, so this was a great way to get going. Making things a little bit more interesting this week, it was chucking down rain the first morning that I went out. And then that turned into really dense fog for the second outing and really dense fog for the third outing. And that might sound like a bad thing, but bad weather can bring something extra to photographs. With the rain and the fog, I had softer colors, I had some moodiness, so that didn't bother me at all. This time, the challenge that I set for myself was to make water-based images and um, try to make a semi-abstract at least, if not abstract, I just want them to be all water-based images. I realize I have a lot of like wooded areas because I'm always looking for the little birds and stuff. And so we'll see what comes of those and I'll definitely show you if there are any good results. All right, so these are the three images that I came up with for my little photo challenge this week. And with the soft light from the fog and the rain, I was really looking for lines and shapes when I was making these photos. And I've always loved the vertical or portrait format, so I chose that for these three. And I was making these just for the creativity exercise, but I ended up really liking that dark blue one. And um, these were just quick Lightroom edits for this video, but I'll likely work up the dark blue image and maybe even the light blue one into final um, photographs and then print them on fine art paper. They're almost in the same vein as these older images that I made as part of a series that I started and I would really like to continue. Um, and they show the lake again, you know, like we were shooting this week, but here I have the, but the city skyline is shown really small in the frame. And the idea there is showing the human element in a small, more humble scale against the vastness of the natural world. And I really like the look, so, so much so that I put them in my living room. So I like the idea of kind of continuing to explore that look. Okay, so what I didn't expect at all, and I'm super excited about, is that doing these exercises is already helping me be more creative with my bird photography. I've wanted to take my bird photography in a more artful direction for quite some time now, and every now and then I've been able to do that. Here's a, a photo that I made about a year ago, and I was really happy with it. Um, I did some motion blur of a sandhill crane, and I like the soft colors, I like the movement, I like the little bit of abstraction here. Um, and I have printed it on some nice fine art paper that gives it that little extra something. But really, most of the time lately, I've been stuck on a creative plateau. So I'm curious, is there a form of photography or maybe even some completely different art form that you've really wanted to try or just explore more, but you've felt a little stuck in doing that? Leave a comment below and maybe we can all inspire each other. So I was really happy to come away with some more creative looking bird photos this week. So here's just um, an example. I did a few variations of um, these pelican photos that I took on the foggy lake this week. And I think they're starting to move in that more artful direction than I was hoping for. So without specifically trying, I think I started to see the images that I was trying to make a little differently when I was out in the field with the camera. And then I was able to envision some more creative ways to edit them. I wanted to keep the soft mood and color of the fog. And I also wanted to leave a lot of negative space. I think once I decide on the exact look that I want for these, I'll take either one or two of them or maybe three even to the final stage and have them printed on the same kind of fine art paper that I did with the Sandhill Crane. Most of my bird and wildlife photos have been more literal, more documentations. And I really do like making those kind of images too. And I think that natural history style actually provides more information for the viewer about the subject matter. But that said, I really love the creative bend and the emotions and feelings that an artistic expression or an artistic interpretation can evoke. I'm definitely not suggesting that any one style is better than the other. 
it's just more a matter of what each of us as the artist or creator really wants to do with our own work and that we're able to feel free enough and confident enough to do that. And just when I thought I was creating some cool stuff, I came across this. <laughs> This spider put me right back in my place. Can you believe this web? And in looking at these images, I'm thinking that I want to keep exploring close-up and macro nature photography. I'll likely add some of these photos to my website. Um, I have some other favorite nature and wildlife and bird photos up there. It's elizabethacevedophotography.com if you want to check it out. I'll leave the link in the description below. If you like this video, please hit that button and subscribe and come along for more photo adventures. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time. <music>